Iodine and your thyroid. We've been told forever and a day that you have to have proper iodine and enough iodine to enhance and support your thyroid. In this video, I'm gonna show you information and research that shows the exact opposite, and we're gonna start right now. Well, hello everyone, I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison and welcome to this week's segment of Why. This is where we take just a few minutes to answer some of the most common health-related questions that I see in my office every day. The question is all about iodine and thyroid and it, 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 it's, it's kind of like I've been a lifelong debate or as long as I can remember, but it was always with support for iodine. You gotta have enough iodine for proper thyroid function. That's just kind of standard, I mean, you need it. The thyroid needs it. And back in the day, we actually, there was, you know, the governments introduced iodine and salt because we had, people had these big goiters, the, their th thyroids were swelling up and it corrected it. So, you know, uh, decades and decades and decades later, now we're reevaluating our iodine uh, efforts, if you will. And this is relatively new information for me. There were some of it I was aware of, but it's quite new. So I wanted to share it with you because I know we have a lot of people with thyroid issues that are following us in our clinic and all over. So I'm gonna share some brand new information with you on iodine. Well, it's relatively new to me. So iodine, that's what we've been told, but we're seeing actually that iodine is causing massive problems and with thyroid, it's causing a whole bunch of problems. So how much iodine do we need? Uh, what's the research and what are we gonna do? Okay, that's what we wanna do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, have some, hopefully some journal articles below, the ones I reference here, so you can view them yourself and, and read them yourself. So there was a study, there was a study out of the New England Journal of Medicine, a very reputable journal, by the way. And they did a, they did a study in China and they had three populations of, of people in different parts of the country. And they, they had a population that their normal diet was relatively high in iodine. This is not supplemented iodine. This is just natural, what they're eating on a daily basis. So there was a, a group that had a lot of iodine in their normal iodine consumption in their regular diet. There was a group that had less and then there was a group that had much, much less, like deficient iodine diets, if you will. So they wanted this to, you know, they looked at all the thyroid function of all three groups, and then they wanted to speculate that the only variable that they could find was differences in iodine consumption from dietary iodine. So what they found, which was really, really interesting, what they found overall was the highest, very, very high prevalence of autoimmune thyroid disease, like Hashimoto's and Graves' disease, in the people with the highest amounts of iodine. So there was much more autoimmune thyroid disease in high, uh, or in diet, just dietary iodine. Okay, so that was one thing they found. They also found in much higher levels of overt hypothyroidism. They also found much, much higher levels of hypothyroidism. And they even found a little bit of episodes of hyperthyroidism in that group. Okay, so that's interesting. And then they went to the next group and they found there were all these thyroid disorders were much less than this group. And then they went to the next, the lowest group, and that group had significantly lower thyroid, any kind of thyroid disorders. So significant, it was less than, this group had less than one fifth or one sixth the thyroid disorders that this group did. The, you know, the highest group did. So it's pretty remarkable. So that was just one study. That was, you know, that was just one study. So there's another study I'll, I'll reference. So there was, um, in, this was in Seoul. There was, uh, what they did, Seoul, Korea, they, this was another, another study. What they did is they, um, they, they had people who had subclinical hypothyroidism. So subclinical means not quite hypothyroidism, but just kind of on the line. So they were like borderline. And what they did, was they, uh, they, they gave them iodine supplementation. It wasn't that much, but they gave them some iodine supplementation. And they were able to see these subclinical hypothyroid cases go into true hypothyroidism. And three to six months after giving them the supplementation, you know, stopping for three to six months, the vast majority of these people, their thyroid function came back up to subclinical. So that's just the second study. And there's way more than what I'm referencing here. So I, I think it's interesting. Um, the third group, the third study I'll reference was out of the European Journal of Endocardiology, okay? 
So the, the study was titled Effects of Small Doses of Iodine on Thyroid Function in Patients with Hashimoto's Thyroiditis. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid disease. It's the most common autoimmune disorder there, there is. So these patients had Hashimoto's, uh, hypo, or Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis, autoimmune thyroid disease. So what happened, all they were giving them was 250 micrograms of iodine. That is very, very little amounts of iodine. That's not that, you know, our, most of the diets in, in the United States consume way more than this, way more than this, just with preservative, food, preservative foods and, uh, and shellfish and, and, you know, all of that. So this is very, very little. This is microdosing, by the way. Okay, so 250 micrograms and these people, all, everybody's thyroid function went down. So this was, well, no, people who were normal, that had normal thyroid, uh, normal thyroid going into it, they ended up in hypothyroidism. Pe other people who were normal, some of them went into hyperthyroidism. And the people who had, uh, who were hash had however many antibodies, you know, elevated thyroid antibodies, they, all of their antibodies went up. So all thyroid disorders across the board, when they added 250 micrograms, all of these thyroid disorders got worse. Everything got worse. And, uh, and the interesting thing is, like the previous study, when they discontinued, when they discontinued the supplementation, I, I, I think it was eight months, um, most of these thyroid disorders started to normalize, meaning improve, okay, most of them, not all. So what does it mean? What does it mean? All of these studies are saying that our iodine requirements for our body, more is not better. We actually need deficient iodine diets and dietary iodine, and we should probably never supplement unless we confirmed in a lab test that we are extremely low because there are risks with this. So that's kind of what it means. And our iodine threshold is really in a small, small window where iodine just has to be perfect. So I don't even have iodine in my clinic anymore because of it. I still test people for iodine sometimes, but I never prescribe it anymore. I don't really need to, not in this part of the world. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you have iodine, you're using it and you have a thyroid issue, you probably should you know, make sure you're not extremely deficient and consider otherwise even dietary iodine, okay? So with that being said, I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison. If you have any questions, you let us know. I'll answer them below. And I look forward to talking to you next day where we're gonna answer the why to another health-related question.